Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming for my talk. My name is Andrei Romiancev. I am with Cascade Microtech. And today we will be, we will be talking about wave level measurements and wave level calibration. And we will dig through uh, some problems related with the multi-line TRL calibration at the wave level. So the systems that we use to uh, measure devices on the test at the wave level contain the wafer probe, RF probe, uh, probes, and uh, the system must be calibrated. For calibration, we use either uh, the set of planar calibration standards fabricated separately of the device on the test on an ISS, or uh, calibration standards can be also implemented very close to the device on the test on the wafer. So we call them on wafer test chip. This is uh, the focus of my talk. And uh, to calibrate the system, we use the calibration software WinCalexy. Why uh, we are investigating on wafer TRL calibration? Because of the several reasons. The first of all is uh, the on wafer calibration, which takes the customized calibration set implemented close to the DUT, helps us to move the measurement reference plane close to the DUT terminals just in one step. For many uh, applications, we don't necessarily need to go through the lengthy embedding procedures. And uh, that helps us to speed up the measurement process and to increase also the device characterization accuracy. Uh, Multi-line TRL uh, became a really a benchmark in calibration procedure and also a benchmark for wafer level accuracy verification. It, rel it relies on the set of calibration standards such as uh, through, reflect, and multiple lines. And it's been introduced at the beginning of 90s by uh, Roger Marks. The on wafer TRL is already a very well established uh, calibration strategy for 3.5 semiconductors, and there is some work already on the way uh, for implementing multi line TRL for uh, uh, by CMOS process, and I will show you some results on that. So, this is an example of the by CMOS multi line TRL test chip. It consists on a through standard, reflect, set of multiple lines, I'm showing only the one of them, so they have a different length. And this is our device under test. This is a little tiny transistor. And after the multi-line TRL performed on the wafer, we set reference plane very close to the DUT terminals. Uh, what is the beauty of the TRL? TRL sets our measurement reference impedance to the characterization, uh, uh, characteristic impedance of the line. This is a very nice uh, property uh, for the connectorized measurements, for waveguide and a coaxial, but this is actually a very big headache for us when we do all the wafer calibration. Why it is so? Because the characteristic impedance of the planar line, whether, whether it's a microstrip or coplanar waveguide, is not a constant value. It has a very strong uh, dispersion in lower frequencies, and also due to the fabrication inaccuracy, it's very difficult to fabricate the lines uh, with close to 50 ohm characteristic impedance real far. This is a very good example uh, showing that a planar line can have a, up to 2.5 ohm offset on the characteristic impedance. This is a real part. So it leads to the inaccurate calibration results. The next graph shows the uh, measurement error, sum of measurement error bounds across the frequency range up to 110 gigahertz. And you see that the calibration when we use this line without any additional exercises is not accurate. What we need to do is to perform the accurate multi-line TRL at the wafer level, we have to know the characteristic impedance of the line, Z0. Okay, how to measure it? There was a very nice publication out also in the beginning of 90s from NIST, from Roger Marks and, uh, and Dylan Williams. Uh, this paper presented the methodology how to measure characteristic impedance of the line for some cases. For instance, from the very known, uh, well-known equation of the propagation constant of the line and characteristic uh, impedance of the line related with the uh, capacitance of the line and the conductance of the line, for the lossless line cases, we can come up with this equation. When we can see that the propagation constant and C of the line can give us a knowledge about characteristic impedance. So if you will do some math and use an additional element called lumped load, we can measure 
capacitance of the line, and from this information and the propagation constant, which is a subproduct of the multi-line TRL, we can reconstruct the characteristic impedance of the line. So what we need to do is to measure the load reflection coefficient, to measure load resistance, and we are done. So the procedure that we use to do that uh, consists of two steps. Actually, these are two runs of multi-line TRL. For the first run, uh, we perform TRL set, and this is a screenshot of Winkle calibration software. We go to the settings, and we define uh, that the reference impedance of our first run TRL will be the characteristic impedance of the line, so without any uh, further transformation. After that, when the calibration is run, we measure the uh, lumpet load element embedded on the same section of the line, and this is a result of the uh, corrected reflection coefficient of the load. You see that the reflection coefficient of the load shows us uh, kind of the uh, real part of the characteristic impedance of the line. Using this reflection coefficient of the load, we loaded it into the re uh, second report of, of Winkel, which uh, calculates capacitance of the line. So this is a measurement uh, reflection coefficient of the load. This is a measured resistance of the load. And we put resistance of the load here. And then we can see this is an extracted, the uh, blue line shows us an extracted capacitance of the line. And this is a, a proposed value to be used. So for this experiment, we came up with a 1.3 picofarad per centimeter, so capacitance of the line. What we need to do is just to go back to our initial TRL set, like here, and uh, re uh, redefine the uh, reference impedance of the, of the TRL to be 50 ohm, because we, know we want to add our calibration with the 50 ohm reference impedance, and enter the measured capacitance of the line. And we run the calibration process, hit the button, calibrate. So in the end, our calibration procedure will be done, and the reference impedance will be set back to the 50 ohm. And what you can see here is a report that Winkel shows us uh, after the successful calibration process. And this is the reconstructed uh, characteristic impedance of the line, real part, an imaginary part of uh, the customized test set implemented on the BICMOS process. So that brings me to the end of my talk. Uh, the lumpet load method provides a very simple way uh, to measure the characteristic impedance of the line. Uh, method is supported uh, and implemented on Wincal XC reporting tool. Uh, and this is very easy to use. You don't need to go through the additional mathematical exercises and use any additional mathematical software for that. And uh, this method and this tool provides us a very simple um, implementation of the accurate multi-line TRL with the reference impedance of 50 ohm. That's all. And uh, at this point, I also would like to acknowledge uh, a very important contribution from this gentleman, Ralph Dorner, from this, our customer from Ferdinand Brown Institute for high frequencies from Berlin. He contributed a lot for, for this work. Thank you very much. Any questions? Oh, the question was, uh, can we compare it with, with LRRM method? Is it the right question? There are two different calibration strategies. The LRRM method is designed to provide the prop tip calibration. So when you calibrate using uh, the commercially available set of calibration standards implemented on ISS and alumina substrate. Oh, let us put it offline. So we, uh, we can discuss it. Just, just step on our booth, and we will discuss the possibility to implement LRRM on the wafer. So any other questions? So if you have any questions, just don't hesitate to come to our booth. It's just, just across the aisle here, and we will show you how, how the software works. So thank you very much.